Mark Griffith here and today we're going to look at a very basic time lapse using the Magic Lantern intervalometer. So I've got a camera on the front here which we'll be doing the time lapse with and a camera just here on the back which is just going to film the back of the other camera so I can show you what's going on. Now this location, this is called the Rio Verde. Uh, it's a beautiful river. That should get us some nice motion going on. And up the top of the valley there, we've got some clouds that I hope will move over the next couple of hours that I want to run this time lapse for. Okay, so let's look at the settings. First up, uh, if you haven't seen the Magic Lantern install video, you'll want to have a look at that. But basically what we'll check first, we're going to check the Canon camera settings and what settings we need. So um, image quality, for this one, we're just going to do it in JPEG. Uh, you can do it in RAW, but that just adds another step. But, but for this, this purpose, let's set it to, um, to JPEG. Uh, grid display, up to you. Histogram, no. Magic Lantern provides its own. Image review, turn that off. It will make your uh, time lapse work a lot better. So leave that off. Now, as far as autofocus goes, we want to disable our autofocus. I'm using a manual lens here, a Rokinon 12 millimeter um, F2 lens. So that won't be a problem, but if you're using, say, the 22 millimeter EOS M camera lens, which is really good as well, make sure you're on manual focus. ISO, today we're gonna to shoot at 100. Keep it nice and low. Um, not, you don't want any auto settings at all. You want it all as manual. Touch shutter disable. Long exposure noise reduction. Now this one, depending on how you want to shoot your time lapse. Uh, if you're doing a very night time lapse and, and you want to keep, keep the time lapse going and not have long pauses, you turn that off. But if you want to make sure it reduces the noise, then you turn that on. So what the long exposure noise reduction does once you take a photo, it takes another photo silently with the shutter closed. And then it subtracts that photo, which will be dark, except for the noise, from the first photo to reduce your noise reduction. But for now, we're gonna turn that off. That's another topic entirely. File numbering continuous. And that'll, that'll do there. Now, as for, we want to be obviously on, on manual exposure mode. So uh, picture profile, I'm always using sign style profile. Okay, so as for our uh, camera settings itself, we want to select our manual white balance. So we want to make sure the white balance is set to something, either sunny or cloudy, most typically. I normally leave my white balance on cloudy all the time across my cameras just to make things easy. If you have it on auto white balance, then between the shots, the color actually may change and that will absolutely ruin your uh, time lapse. Now you want to use manual settings. Again, if it's on automatic, any type of automatic, um, the exposure will change slightly between pictures and then you'll get flickering in your time lapse. So basically we're gonna try and get our, our scene correctly exposed. Now I've got some ND filters on the front here, so I can rotate those. Um, check your focus first. We'll focus for infinity, and then I'm gonna stop this lens down manually. Let's say about f5.6. And I want to go for as much um, motion blur with this water as I can. So because I've got the ND filters on the, on the front, I've got an 8x ND filter and then a circular polarizer as well, I should be able to get, um, I should be able to set the aperture. I've got it at about f11 here. And my exposure
My exposure now is at two seconds and the clouds are just starting to overexpose there, which is um, great. I, now, I don't want to go down too far with my aperture, so I'm, ju I'm just going to back that off to um, one second. So we've got a little bit of overexposure up there and so I've got the clouds in there and I've got the river in there. Uh, yeah, pretty good. All right. Let's take a shot and make sure that works out. Now it looks like I've got a, a little bit of uh, vignetting up the top here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna change my shutter speed on the camera filming here. In two levels of overexposure. So because I've got all the extra filters on the front of my lens, you can see just at the corners that's showing up. Um, I'm going to leave that there, but you know, I'm, I think, all right, so that's way overexposed, all the sky's blown out, so I need to do some other, other tweaks here. Now sometimes these settings help, um, exposure sim, exposure overrides, it just helps with, um, Sometimes it helps if the photo you're taking doesn't look quite the same. Okay, so now, now I've got the proper exposure here in my live view. But it means I've got to reduce that shutter speed quite a lot. So I'm now down to one-fifth of a second. Let's go up to f16. So I've got 0.3 of a second and I'm at f16. Really, I'd probably like a bit more ND filter. Now let's just check that shot. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now, once you've got your exposure right and you're happy with the shot that you're taking, we set up the intervalometer. Um, so we go into the magic lantern menu and here's our intervalometer. So select that one. Now. Now there are quite a different, there's, there's quite a few settings here. Well, there's not that many really. You got your interval time, like how often you want to take the photo. Um, start after, I normally, I like to set that at about two, 10 seconds. Start trigger, what starts it off. I'll, I'll use a half shutter. Um, now I just want, want this to go forever until I'm, I'm ready to finish. Manual focus ramp, another subject entirely. But for now, I'm going to take a photo every two seconds. Now, if we enable, go back to that menu there, and actually enable that intervalometer, when we take, change the settings here, you can actually see, as I change that there, it'll tell you um, some information about how long the time lapse is going to be. Uh, an estimated 10,000 shots over 10 hours will give us five minutes of um, time lapse. Um, I want this to go as fast as possible. So I'm actually just going to uh, put this time lapse on like crazy. So it'll just shoot as quickly as possible. Now we recompose and now it's just a matter of um, letting it go. Now, of course, you've got to make sure that your memory card is empty before you start this. Um, that's very important. And um, now we just wait. So in summary, what I've done here, I've put a lot of ND on the front, a lot of um, ND filters on the front of the camera to darken that as much as possible so I can get as much motion blur out of that um, water in front of us as I can. Um, with such a bright day, I was only managing to get that down to 0.3 of a second and I've got the intervalometer just going flat out. So it's basically the same as holding the shutter down. Uh, you can do timings, but I like to capture as much information as I can. Another thing to note, a good thing to have is a nice sturdy tripod. Uh, this is a 
aluminium tripod. It's pretty solid. Uh, it does have a hook on here where you can hook a, um, like a big bottle of water or a bag with some rocks or something, and that'll give it more stability as well. Uh, because believe it or not, even a little bit of wind has, can cause your camera to shake. So in this case, we're pretty heavy. I'm on very solid ground as well. I'm on stones, but if you're on softer ground and then you're moving around your um, tripod, even that motion of just stepping around can cause your tripod to tilt a bit. So once your time lapse is going, let it go and walk away. Don't touch it, just let it do its thing. I'm gonna let this go. Um, there's a little bit of rain maybe coming in, so hopefully I'll be able to leave this as long as I can. Anyway, after this, we'll go and we'll do some post-processing and I'll show you how to make all these images into a movie on the computer. Okay, I've decided to make this into two separate videos because there are a number of different ways to do this. One is with a program called FFmpeg, which is a free open source command line program. It's a little bit tricky to use, but it does a lot of things. And one of the things it does well is converting an image sequence into a movie. So I've got one video that will show you how to use FFmpeg to do that. And another tool, which you may already have, is Final Cut Pro 10. And I'll also do a video on how to make a time lapse out of that. However, Final Cut Pro isn't the ideal tool for the job. And even if you do have Final Cut Pro, it is preferable to use the FFmpeg method. Anyway, I'll provide links to both of those videos here and now, and I will catch you next time. Cheers.